Welcome to video 23, third in the mollusk series. And we're finishing up the last class in gastropods. So pulmonata, air-breathing snails. Uh, these are mostly freshwater terrestrial ones. Uh, so the only one that we need to know about in terms of the marine snails is amphibola. There are mud snails worldwide that are intertidal. Um, but the only one in New Zealand is amphibola cronata. And as we talked about in the previous video, the mantle cavity has become highly vascularized, means lots, lots and lots of uh, little capillaries and the like, which means that there's more uh, area for a gas exchange. They don't move very quickly anyway, so they don't have a massive uh, oxygen demand. And so these are the ones that are active when the tide is out, as opposed to when the tide is in air breathing snails. Land snails uh, include one of the uh, largest snails in the world, the Palo Elefanta. It's a carnivorous land snail. That is a pulmonata. All right, moving on from gastropods to the class bivalva. So bi means two, and valve shell. So bivalve two shells. Okay. You're very familiar with these things, mussels, oysters, cockles, clams. Um, and so they are the ones with two shells that have a hinge ligament that sticks the shells together. And hopefully we'll have a chance to look at those in lab. Uh, adductor muscles, okay, that is the part of, say, the scallop that you eat or the stringy bit that gets between your teeth if you're eating a mussel. And a scallop, the um, the big white uh, meaty bit is the adductor muscle. It sticks to both shells, and when it contracts, it pulls those two shells tightly together in order to protect itself. And then they finally, as, as well, they have something called a pedal retractor muscle, which uh, may, helps the foot move in and out. So you might think that the muscular foot is absent, and in some of the bivalves, there's not much of one, but um, in other bivalves, they help them dig, like you'll see in a uh, pippy or a tua tua if it, you're at the beach and you watch them dig themselves back in. That is the muscular foot. A um, couple of bits that you need to know, uh, and on the bivalve shell, the umbo, which is essentially the uh, peak, of the of the shell, it's where the the shell uh, starts grow. It's the place where the shell has started growing, and um, they just get bigger by adding little bits more to the margin around here. And you'll see that the mantle, if you open one up, always uh, follows the edge of the the shell. And then the hinge ligament, which is this ligament that sticks the two shells together, but it's flexible, so it can open. They can open and and close. That's about it for the shell that you'll need to know. Um, laterally compressed body, uh, you're not really gonna see a body form. Uh, there's not much of a head, but um, there is an expansive mantle cavity that will follow the outline of the shell. And these ones don't have a radula. These are the only bivalves that are, sorry, the only mollusks that we're gonna be looking at that don't have a radula. Uh, but they, they do have um, the gills that act as a food collecting apparatus and they filter feed. So these things don't have eat big particles, they filter feed, and so they don't need a radula in order to scrape those uh, big particles into, into small particles. Okay, so they're called lamellibranchs. Lamella um, means sheet. And brank, as we've seen before, means gill. And the particles are collected on the gills um, as like the little feather-like gills. And then they're transported to something called the labial palp and the mouth. And hopefully we can see these in the, uh, uh, the lab. But what I want you to do is go to this um, URL, which I have provided a link on the lesson plan and uh, on Moodle, and go and play around with that. It is an interactive animation of how muscles collect food with their gills. 
So the gills essentially are they're um, okay. They're much like we saw uh, with the two sheets, right? That um, when we were looking at the feathers and the earlier like feather-like gills that um, that we saw earlier in the in the mollusk series, and these gills instead of being uh, just a feathery like thing like this, they're kind of uh, folded so that the gill is kind of, is folded and it faces along the same way, one behind the other. But they still have these little gill filaments, and they're folded into into a couple of, into sheets. So the, the deposit feeders became suspension feeders, and uh, now they live in almost every habitat. Not only um, not only soft sediment, but uh, stuck to rocks and the like, of course. So here we can see the gills folded into these sheets, and you can see what a, a nice uh, filter feeding apparatus that is. Uh, so what will happen is, um, where the water will come in one side of the gill and go out the other. If you go to that animation, then it's very apparent how how these things work. Um, and so what happens is the the food is caught on the on the gills and then it moves down the gill fill of these ciliated gills. There's a little cilia that move the things down like a conveyor belt, and then along here to a conveyor belt, and then. These labial palps, labia means lips, and the these things essentially are like lips, uh, just like on your face, that manipulate and sort the food. And so the food can be sorted, and if it is, because there's a lot of suspended stuff in the water that is not edible, that you don't want to eat sand particles and the like, the labial palps will just get rid of that stuff and not eat it, and then all the good stuff, the good food particles go into the mouth. Uh, so you don't have to run lots and lots of sand and non-food items through your digestive tract. And you just put the good food items sorted by the labial palps into the mouth. And then they go down and through the bag guts, the visceral mass, through the intestines. And then our, um, the waste is just ejected with the out current flow of water that um, is been generated by the gills. So moving on to the um, class scaphopods, we're finished with bivalves. It may have seemed very, like a very cursory, um, very short treatment of bivalves, but pretty much every bivalve from a uh, scallop to a to oyster is just sitting there doing the same thing, filtering water out with its um, with its lamellobranch gills, really important as, as environmental scrubbers, taking a lot of particulate matter out of the, the water column. Um, so the tusk or tooth shells, which are called scaphopods, uh, these things are named after, they look very similar to an elephant tusk or a, a pig, like a boar tusk. And they are a mollusk that has a single shell and it is elongated uh, into a tube that, um, and they burrow with the tube facing like a tusk and the thin end of it is facing up out of the sediment and the uh, big end facing down into the sediment with, and they've evolved the muscular foot into more of a tentacle. And what they do is they're called, um, they essentially eat interstitial particles, very small particles that are within organic particles that are within the sediment. Here's a nice picture of one. Um, we don't have a lot of these on the east coast of the uh, of New Zealand that I've seen. Um, they're much more common in, say, Coffea and Raglan Harbor around here on the west coast, um, but uh, very common. Here's another picture of a. Uh, scaphopod or tusk shell and um, pre-european times maori made necklaces out of these they were very common jewelry um, what we see here is 
that there's the ventilating end that has a water current moving in and out. Okay, and um, so the water can come back into the vascularized uh, uh, mantle cavity. And then the muscular foot, rather than being a, um, a, a one big piece, is evolved into tentacles, which can reach out and grab little bits. They help burrow, but they also grab little bits of organic, little organic particles, like of food that are edible within the sediment, and they bring it into the mouth, and then that is how they they feed. Those are called interstitial particles. And you notice that these things are starting to look a bit like um, a uh, more like a squid or something like that with these tentacles evolving out of the muscular foot. And we'll see that as we go through the evolutionary pathway that these things do are, are the precursors to, um, to the cephalopods. Okay. And here's another picture of how a, um, sorry, a uh, scaphopod is oriented into the, the sand. All right, as we've covered before, mantle surface used for gas exchange and interstitial organisms. Okay, and that leads us to cephalopods. All right, these are ones that are more similar to lifestyle to that of a fish. And I just wanted to have this last uh, video or this last slide on the video because um, it, like we said, the tentacles have evolved into this type of organism from earlier mollusks. And we'll get into that in the next video. Thank you.